in the past, like empires rise and fall, right? We see the rise of Rome, the fall of Rome, uh, this type of thing, right? Rise of Egypt, d like demise of the Egyptians, demise of the Egyptians, so on, whatever. We can go back, you see it, it's cyclical, it goes up and down. And typically when we talk about that, we talk about usually some sort of transformation that was taking place that caused a shift in powers, right? Especially as it pertains to different governments, right? So for example, when you had the last standing city of Rome, Constantinople, which really had separated itself from Rome or whatever, we've used this one before, it's in the book Software, but there was a lack of adoption of a new technology known as cannons. And within a year of this discovery, Constantinople fell to the power of cannons. Now, what transformation are we going through? Well, we're going through this transformation that involves specifically cryptocurrency, right? Specifically digital finance in general, right? And the failure to adapt and adopt this technology can be the demise of empires. This is just the way it goes. I'm not saying that the U.S. is going to, you know, experience its demise due to this in particular, but it's important to understand that it's clear that with this type of uh, legislation, it's a, it's a legitimate concern, right? We've seen this adoption of El Salvador of cryptocurrency in the, you know, in, in the past few years, and it's proving to be somewhat successful for them. It's increased, you know, at least like the, parts of their economy. They've been able to reduce crime by investing in, of course, more uh, law enforcement, all that sort of stuff. And we're starting to see a rise of El Salvador kind of from the ashes a group of U.S. senators introduced legislation Tuesday centered around El Salvador's adoption of Bitcoin as legal tender. The Accountability for Cryptocurrency in El Salvador, ACES Act, was introduced by Senate Foreign Relations Committee banking member Jim Risch, Republican Idaho, and Committee Chairman Bob Mendez, Democrat of New Jersey, as well as Bill Cassidy, Republican of Louisiana. The bill, if passed, would make man would mandate the production of a State Department report on El Salvador's Bitcoin moves, as well as a plan to mitigate potential risks to the financial U.S. Uh, the U.S. financial system. So it's clear that, and this is where things are weird. The attack vector here is focus on a country that is participating within Bitcoin and then try to mitigate those potential risks to the U.S. financial system. But at the same time, let's go ahead and stifle any sort of advancement within that industry within our own borders, right? With things like the cryptocurrency mining tax the and, and so on, um, and all of the regulations and surrounding the SEC and filings and so on. And... It's making it more and more difficult for people within the cryptocurrency industry to be innovative within the U.S. And as opposed to adopting it and becoming a powerhouse through that manner, it's going to be an attack, it feels like, right? And we see this. I mean, it's, it's clearly turning into... Cryptocurrency is clearly turning into an international power struggle at the end of the day. The bill states that not later than 90 days after the submittal of the report re required by subsection 19A, the Secretary of State, in coordination with the heads of other relevant federal departments and agencies, shall submit to the appropriate committees of Congress a plan to mitigate any potential risk to the United States financial system posed by the adoption of cryptocurrency as legal tender in El Salvador and any other country that uses the United States dollar as legal tender. The State Department report would include several key pieces of <coughs> information. Hmm. Wait, yeah, about El Salvador's process to legally make Bitcoin legal tender, as well as an examination of how that law affects its citizens and businesses. 
For example, the report would describe the process El Salvador followed to develop and enact its Bitcoin law, the extent to which its citizens are using cryptocurrency, and the country's technical ability to handle cybersecurity risks. It would also include contextual information such as data on El Salvador's unbanked population and remittance flows from the U.S. The report would also investigate matters such as El Salvador's bilateral economic and commercial relationship with the United States and the potential for reduced use by El Salvador of the U.S. dollar, the United States dollar. And obviously, like these partnerships, everything that's going to be going on in the U.S. when as it pertains to cryptocurrency is going to be because the U.S. dollar is, at this point, very clearly under attack. Not only, you know, by cryptocurrency to a certain extent, but also by other countries and program like obviously BRICS, right? That's what we're referring to. And the here in a second, the removal of the use of US dollar in other countries. And part of this really, I mean, is all kind of spurred on by this, this power struggle that has been going on with Russia and Ukraine and sanctions, right? And because the U.S. is going around waving its big wand, it's really hurting the U.S. dollar, I think, at this point. El Salvador's adoption of Bitcoin as legal tender raises significant concerns about the economic stability and financial integrity of a vulnerable U.S. trading partner in Central America, Rich said in a press statement. This new policy has the potential to weaken U.S. sanctions policy empowering malign actors like China and organized criminal organizations are bipartisan. And they say it right there, right? Like, what is this? Well, it's because it's going to weaken U.S. sanctions policy. But I would argue that it's weak, like the U.S. sanctions policy is weakened because of the countries of which it decided to target with sanctions, right? Our bipartisan legislation seeks greater clarity on El Salvador's policy and requires the administration to mitigate potential risk to the U.S. financial system. El Salvador's president, Nayib Bukele, responded to the news with an English language tweet. He said, OK, boomers, <laughs> you have zero jurisdiction on a sovereign and independent nation. We are not your colony your backyard or your front yard stay out of our internal affairs and don't try to control something you can't control oof el salvador declared bitcoin legal tender on september 7 2021 alongside the u.s dollar following the passage of a law in the country's national legislature earlier that year the full legislation can be found here so go check that out. Thanks for checking out this clip from the Crypto Mining Show. You can check out the full episode here or more crypto content down here. Also, I'd like you to check out my locals page at sonofatech.locals.com where you can become a member for free or choose to be a $5 a month supporter that unlocks additional content.